Okay, so this uh, this shows you the number of people with an A1C of less than seven, and that's green. And you can see, irrespective of whether you're in an urban area, whether you're in a rural area, only about 30%, a third of our diabetics have their glucoses under control. And this is very much the same across the world. We are no different. What about management? Well, um, SMBG is not something that is commonly done. There are huge issues regarding cost and things in India, only about 15% of the urban population and less than 10% of the rural population uh, can afford and do uh, an SMBG or self-monitoring regularly. As you would expect, anywhere else, this is mostly type 2 diabetes, so there's a huge proportion on tablets and a very small slice in green taking insulin, so people are very resistant to insulin use and the red indicates insulin plus OHA. But there's another nice story that we'd like to talk about, and that's about migration. So when you look at people migrating in you know, large numbers from rural areas into urban cities, looking for jobs, looking for opportunities, what happens to their diabetes? You know, are, are, are metabolic diseases increasing? And this is what we find. I, I apologize for this very busy looking thing, but just look at the red and the orange. So the red indicates, I mean, sorry, orange indicates rural to urban migration. And shown here are various diseases, diabetes, pre-diabetes, obesity, etc. You'll see this orange bars are quite high, sometimes even higher than simply living in an urban area for a long time. So this whole phenomenon of rural to urban migration, the increase that happens in your socioeconomic status personally, the surroundings that you come to influence you in a bad way in terms of metabolic diseases. So this is sometimes even worse than actually living in an urban area for a long period of time. These are the odds ratios of various diseases. So 2.2 for diabetes, for moving to an urban area, and uh, for obesity, it's also quite high. Two, hypertension and dyslipidemia, it's 1.4. You'd think that with all the noise we're making about diabetes, people, a lot of people would know about it, but that's what we think. Unfortunately, we're not yet there, right? So when you ask a simple question, have you heard of a condition called diabetes across the country? Less than about half of the population, general population, seems to know. So there's like a half of people who've never even heard of diabetes, leave alone of whether it can be prevented or there's something that they can do about it. What about uh, can diabetes be prevented among those who had heard? Well, again, about a half of them did know. Of course, these are significantly higher in urban areas, possibly due to better education. That has begun to happen in India. There's a shift of the epidemic from urban to rural areas and from older to younger people. There are large numbers of undiagnosed diabetes in the country. Only a third of those with diabetes have their A1Cs under control. A very small percentage is doing SMBG and insulin use is really low. Migration into urban areas increases your risk for diabetes and other metabolic diseases and knowledge about diabetes is still low in the population. So suffice to say that we have a lot of work to do. Can we do something about it? Well, perhaps we can, and the next speaker is probably going to tell you about it. Thank you very much. And then Hollander, my teacher, Professor S.P. Diagrajan, Professor of Eminence and Dean Research at the SRM University, uh, the Australian Consul General will be with us today. Many other visiting faculty from the Deakin University, many of whom are our collaborators in our research work. Visiting faculty from other universities and colleges, the representatives of the farmer and students, my warm welcome to all of you to this event. A big thank you to Deakin for allowing us to partner with them. I know for your 25th year celebration, you had a wide choice of institutions with whom you could have collaborated, and yet you chose us uh, to partner with you for the special symposium on diabetes research. And a big thank you to you for the confidence that you have in us. Diabetes today, you'll hear more about this in the sessions which follow, but for those of you who are here only for the inauguration, Today, India is in the second place as far as diabetes is concerned in the world, and China is ahead of us. But the projections from the WHO and the IDF are that in the next 10 years or so, India will certainly emerge 
as the leading country in the world with diabetes. And the reason for this is pretty obvious because we will become the largest country on this planet in another five years or so. And therefore, with our exploding population and with a given, with our susceptibility to diabetes, about which we'll speak about in a few minutes, it's no surprise that diabetes is a major challenge in this country. And therefore, the need for research, because we have to think globally, but we have to act locally, because we have to find culture-specific solutions to our own problems here. For example, the, the uh, things that we learn from Deakin University are fantastic. We learn from the techniques, we learn from their experience, and there's a lot that we can learn from Australia. It's a big country with a small population, as somebody said yesterday at the dinner, and we are a small country with a huge population. I think many Indians will fit into uh, Australia, if you put it geographically. And yet we are only, a, uh, we are, you know, the population of Australia is so small. So when you are able to handle health so well, and if you are able to set the standards so high, it gives us hope that we can learn a lot from you. And in, uh, in return, there are a lot of things that you can find in India which you may not be able to find in Australia. For example, the connection between poverty and diabetes, the, the epidemiological transition which is occurring in our country, and the newer things of health and we're going to talk about new aspects of diabetes we never thought about. We only thought that fat people get diabetes. It's no longer true. We know that the environment produces diabetes. So this symposium hopefully will throw a lot of light. And the idea behind inviting students from different universities to participate, and I know that Terry is here, the Terry Institute of Nanotechnology, is to foster more and more relationships to see that we build on whatever we have already done and to see that more and more students are benefited. We are very proud that for the last five years we've had an extensive collaboration with Deakin University. We collaborate with almost 15 or 20 universities abroad, but with no hesitation, and not because this is a Deakin event, I can tell you with all pride that Deakin is the best university with which we have ever collaborated. We started with PhD, then we start, went on to a nurse diabetes nurse educators program, and we are hoping to expand this both in terms of number of students, more PhD programs, and also more courses. So I wish this uh, symposium all success, and I hope that at the end of it, we will have uh, much more light on the problems that we are facing today, and hopefully many more solutions that we can all work together. Thank you. Approach to this. So Deakin University has over the past 10 years driven its research and innovation success into the top 1% of universities worldwide, ranking at 211 in the ARWU with our health and medical research important in this. And it's our research institutes and strategic research centres that have been a key mechanism in this success. And the knowledge and the translation they've generated to address chronic disease including diabetes. So we have a new, uh, our recently established uh, Institute for Physical Activity and Nutrition which aims to reduce chronic disease and improve the health of Australians and our wider communities, primarily through nutrition and physical activity research but also input into policy. Uh, this includes research into health in disadvantaged communities, children's health and into healthy ageing and healthy neighbourhoods as well as food policy and consumer food choices, all highly relevant to the challenge of diabetes. But as we know, nutrition, exercise, pharmacological therapies are effective in themselves, but we need much more, it is very clear. So our newest institute is factors and how we can transition to value-based health uh, and care, and how we can create economically sustainable health systems, important to you as well as us, and really create, uh, address effectively the challenge of diabetes through a wider systemic approach. So very much focusing on health systems and services, prevention of population and health at community systems and government regulatory levels and not just the individual. So in the fight against diabetes, these capabilities of Deakin have been complemented by and added to by the capacity of our key partners here in India. We acknowledge again a tremendous partnership with the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation, which has been crucial as well as the Vice Chancellor and President, Deakin University, to address the gathering. Thank you. And 
think about the terrible things that have happened in New Zealand today. And we grieve for families who have lost loved ones. We grieve for Jacinta during the Prime Minister of New Zealand and what she must now do to come and to support the people of Christchurch who have had earthquakes and now face this terrible incident of terrorism. Um, many people have died. The next generation matters to us, my friends, and how we educate them and how we make them healthy, that's better, um, is something we do need to think about. So I do stop at that moment. You have to face your reality, and our reality is that the world is not an equal place. The world is not people who all think the same way. I wanted to talk today about partnership and the partnership we have <coughs> with the Diabetes Research Foundation. Partners matter, and of course partners start often tentatively and work towards a common goal or they no longer are partners. And one of the great joys of this partnership that we have, Deakin University has with the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation is that we have grown together and Dr. Moen, you say that you were delighted that um, to work with us. We were absolutely thrilled and flattered when you said yes. I have to say it, we almost danced down the corridors. We were so delighted that we could work with such an interesting, uh, such an interesting research institute in such an interesting country. Um, Australia and India go back a long way, our 25 years um, matters um, in that regard. But of course the work we do is interesting. My second point then is how do we get here? How do we get to a crisis of a disease that is controllable? And when you look at, at Deakin, we use an integrated reporting mechanism for managing progress and where we're going. And we plot against the, system, the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. And so I looked at them, I was trying to think what could I say that would be meaningful to an audience of health professionals who do face this incredible problem. And all the SDGs are going up. Fewer women die in childbirth globally. Fewer people are in poverty globally. There is less domestic violence, less violence against women globally. And then you get to the health and longevity of the next generation and here we are facing this astounding crisis with more science, more knowledge, and more facilities at our disposal than we could ever imagine. So how we approach this piece of work and how we ensure the next generation is healthy without diabetes and then the associate diseases of obesity, of cardiovascular, and of course the scourge of poverty that still inhabits many parts of the world is going to be more than pure science. This must go to culture. It will have to go to how we educate and how we persuade people that there's a different way of living and a different way of working. I agree totally the connection between poverty and diabetes appears to be very found and recognised. But in a wealthy country like Australia, where not so many people are at the levels of poverty that you would experience in India, we have the same problem. In our case, it's, a, it's the disease of indolence, the disease that comes as a consequence of the digital revolution and automation. I was talking at our team address this morning um, with um, Dr. Professor Basker, and he was saying that he notices that people no longer dig. You always have a machine. People no longer sweep their floors, they have a, a vacuum cleaner. People no longer have to beat their food, they use an automatic stirrer. And so none of us use the muscles that we were given as part of our evolution. So I leave you with those thoughts, and I hope that partnership, the partnership that we have um, between our two parties is going to produce outcomes and results that you might find useful. But my friends, I'm here for another purpose. And I'm just going to get on to my, because I want to read something to you. Um, we are, just recently we offered Dr. Mohan an honorary doctorate from Deakin University and he was kind enough to accept and it was a grand occasion. But the Faculty of Health, the partnership is with our Faculty of Health and with our Institute of Health Translation and they have now made Dr. Mohan an honorary professor. And I, and 
so I just wanted to read to you the, facilit the felicitation in that regard. Dr. Mohan and the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation has been the longest serving partner of the Faculty of Health in India. And Dr. Mohan has been a delight to work with and an inspiration to all of our staff and students. As a researcher, he is exemplary, having published well over 1,000 papers in the peer-reviewed literature and mentoring hundreds of staff and students. As an educator, he has been responsible for the dissemination of knowledge on diabetes internationally over several decades. And Deakin University is proud to have developed jointly with Dr. Mohan a diabetes educator course that is being delivered by the NDRF to community nurses at very low cost. In 2018, Dr. Mohan was awarded the Harold Rifkin Distinguished International Service in the Course of Diabetes Award by the American Diabetes Association, making him the first doctor from India to receive this award. We at Deakin now honour Dr. Mohan and our, and our long and proud association with him, and so it is our great pleasure to announce the appointment of Dr. Mohan as an honorary professor of Deakin University. Welcome and congratulations, Professor Mohan. We are delighted that you have accepted.